U.S. President Joe Biden had hoped to build momentum for his candidacy and boost his support among voters in his debate with Donald Trump, but his weak and disjointed performance has sparked panic among Democrats and reignited the debate over whether he should even be a candidate. As the New York Times writes, Biden's performance raised doubts about his ability to run an active and competitive campaign, instead of allaying concerns about his age, the 81-year-old Biden made it the main issue. Democrats who have spent months defending the president from doubters were exchanging frantic phone calls and text messages minutes after the debate began. Almost desperate, some took to social media to express shock, while others privately debated whether it was too late to persuade the president to step down in favor of a younger candidate, the The New York Times writes. Biden now faces a barrage of calls to resign, one Democrat said. Parties exist to win. The man on stage with Trump cannot win. Fear of Trump suppressed criticism of Biden, now that same fear will fuel calls for his resignation, he said. At the same time, Biden's advisors reject any speculation about his withdrawal from the race. Thus, Vice President Kamala Harris, who is being considered as a possible candidate to replace Biden, spoke in his defense, saying that Americans should focus on what Biden has achieved for the country during his time in office, and not on his performances at the debates. Although even she admitted that, it was a slow start, that's obvious to everyone. California Governor Gavin Newsom, who has also been mentioned as a possible replacement for Biden, also brushed off talk of a change of candidate. I will never turn my back on President Biden, and I don't know a single Democrat in my party who would, especially after tonight," he said. At the same time, former Senator Claire McCaskill, a Missouri Democrat, called the incident a crisis. Joe Biden should have done one thing tonight and he didn't do it, she said. He had one job to do, which was to convince America that at his age he could do the job, and today he didn't do it, she said. The T-64 tanks, modernized by Ukrainian army, pose great problems for the Russian army. For more than two years of war, Ukraine received about 700 tanks from the Allies. But at the same time, the Ukrainians have established systematic work to reactivate and modernize the T-64 tanks. And this is why the Ukrainian armed forces still have quite a lot of tanks in service, despite heavy losses during two years of a full-scale war, writes Forbes. The publication cites the example of the 150th Mechanized Brigade, which was formed only in October last year. The brigade was equipped with modernized T-64 BV tanks, of the 2017 model. This is a good sign in the conditions of a full-scale war, which is now in its third year. The Ukrainian military is desperately trying to get enough infantry fighting vehicles and armored personnel carriers. Infantry combat taxis, to put it simply, but at least they have enough tanks. Forbes notes, the T-64 is a classic Cold War tank, 42 tons in weight, a diesel engine, hundreds of millimeters of armor, three crew members and a 125 millimeter gun with an automatic loader. The Malyshev plant in Kharkov produced new T-64s between 1963 and 1987. With the collapse of the USSR, Ukraine inherited about 3,000 of these tanks. Over the years of independence, the Malyshev plant has modernized about 1,000 T-64s for constant use by the troops. What happened to the rest is still a matter of speculation and at the same time, is a probable explanation for why the Ukrainian armed forces do not run out of tanks in the third year of a full-scale war and new brigades are equipped with fresh T-64 BVs. As Forbes notes, with the onset of hybrid aggression in 2014, Ukraine began removing old T-64s from warehouses across the country, a process that will almost certainly accelerate significantly in 2022. The Malyshev plant suffered serious damage in the first weeks of the war, but Ukrainian industry adapted, scattering existing industrial equipment and creating new workshops in less vulnerable cities. At the same time, Kyiv signed agreements for the repair and modernization of the T-64 at facilities in Poland and the Czech Republic. 
the expansion and partial outsourcing of the Ukrainian tank industry explains why, after losing about 300 T-64s in battle, the Ukrainian military still has enough T-64s to maintain existing brigades and equip new ones, the publication writes. At the same time, every new T-64 is an old body with modern optics and fire control equipment. That is why the T-64 is, in a certain sense, a limited resource that will run out over time, but not anytime soon. Forbes estimates that Soviet T-64 stockpiles will last for several more years of active war if Ukrainian casualty rates remain around the current levels. And against this background, Ukraine is agreeing to launch the production of Western tanks on its territory and continues to receive ready-made tanks from partners.